Okay, so I noticed there was a new version of Batacera on the website under their download section. And uh, I've been trying it out, but it hasn't been working for me. Every time I try and launch a ROM, it just crashes. But I can see there is an update. So let's give that a try. So it looks like it's one and a half gigabytes of download. So let's come back when that's all done. Okay, so I thought it had crashed because it was on 337 on the downloads and out of something like 1500. But uh, I just turned it off, turned it on again, and there were no updates. And I just tried a GameCube game, and it's launched. Right, so let's quit out of this and just show you... Oh, I'll tell you what I do need to do first. Yeah, so quit out seems to work fine. I need to try and change the audio. Let's try this one. Oh, we have sound through my speaker. So let's go back into Sega Rally. And yes. Okay, let's just go straight in as quick as we can. Haven't had to configure the controller at all. Oh, oh that was good. Yeah, it's all working. Nice. Looks fine as well, feels, feels reasonably smooth. Yeah, happy with, oh. Oh crikey, uh, yeah that's definitely working fine, uh, that definitely feels fast enough as well. Right, let's quit out of that, oh this update has made a big difference and let's try, so Dave Mirror Freestyle BMX if I've got this on here. Now this usually works too fast on emulation. I don't know why. The PlayStation 2 version is fine. The GameCube version is fine. The original PlayStation version is fine. Uh, but for some reason the clock goes too quick on a Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, and whatever you do, you can't, you can't get it to go the right speed. Well, let's give this a go. Because this is the best looking version of this game. This is the best platform for playing this actual game. And it feels like it might still be too fast from the menus. We'll see. Oh no, it feels... I think it might be the right speed. Or... Let's see. Yeah, I think that's right. So basically, you could tell it was going too fast before because the clock was just too fast. But this... seems to be perfect. It just, it just was that bit too fast. Yeah, this is working nicely. Let's see if I can do a... Uh, there's a, there's a very hard trick, which is... Oh, no, I'm going too fast for that. Uh, a front flip, a fakey front flip. I might have to do it through... Oh, he's there. I mean, it wasn't the best looking one. But uh, yeah, that is, that's actually working fine. And that's the first time in emulation I've had this working at what I would say was the right speed. Nice. Not very nice. So, we seem to be good for Dreamcast and GameCube. Original PlayStation, I'm sure, is going to work fine. But let's try Demolition Racer. Oh, didn't work. Right, could be. Sometimes there's two versions of a ROM. And I might pick the wrong one. Well, it's definitely this one seems to be loading the right. Okay, so PlayStation doesn't seem to be working for me. Let's quit, at least quit, it, it didn't freeze where I couldn't quit out of it. Let's try a bit of Porsche Challenge. Obviously I can sort out the BIOS on this. I just copied a load of ROMs over uh, from a RetroPie stick that I usually use. Yeah, this looks like it's gonna be okay. Obviously I could try and play around in another video, maybe to play around with the settings to try and make things look better. It looks very Spectrum-like. Hopefully it's just the menus. Oh, okay, there's definitely something not right, so let's quit out of that. I'm sure we can get PlayStation working. Obviously, there's plenty of power there. What else have we got? MS-DOS. Now, I haven't really got things I know would work in this. We could try Tomb Raider. And... Okay, so that hasn't worked. So, again, I might need to look a bit more at that. So let's see, can I quit out? Yeah, I can quit out in the normal way. So start, select, and the Xbox button. 
puts me out. I would have thought I had more in here. PC Engine. Okay, that's the games that are supplied with the build. Oh, so there's some in here that I put in here. Always like a bit of Sunset Riders. Yeah, well, obviously this was going to work. Uh, it's very easy to emulate SNES, but it's nice to see that it is working. So, well, let's just try Wii and see if it looks like it's going to launch it. Try, again, a bit of Dave Mirror, but you do need a proper Wii controller to do this. I have used it with the Dolphin Bar before, and it worked fine. Okay, it's definitely launching. It's not going to... It's not going to let me play it because I haven't got a Wii remote configured. Okay, well I can move. I just, oh, I just haven't got any steering of any sort. Have I? No, I haven't got any steering of any sort. I don't think. <laughs> but the speed looks alright. It does appear to be working. Okay, let's quit out of that. So let's see what version, what beta version we're on. Does it say under system settings, information... Yeah, here we go. So here's the version we're looking at, 37 dev, 835, well, I'll let you screenshot that, Orange Pi 5. So the graphics is OpenGL, I figured it obviously must have some sort of 3D support in there because it was definitely working with GameCube. Yeah, I'll play around with this more. I've been playing around with Supreme RetroPi and also Gel OS, and I would say this so far is the most complete uh, but they're all, the great thing is that we've got three different systems being worked on uh, all the time. And uh, yeah, the Orange Pi 5 is, uh, is definitely getting good support for retro gaming. It's not like a Raspberry Pi 4, but uh, for an RK3588 device, it's great to see so many choices. Still, if you want out and out performance, the CPU is better supported by Android and so Daijisho is the best way of getting multi-game emulators sorted out. But then I like the way all these sort of emulation style systems run. So let's quit out of this and show you how I put some ROMs on it. So that was running from an SD card. Uh, if I boot from this NVMe drive, which I think has either got Ubuntu or Ambient on it. So let's switch off. Uh, you can see I've got a little USB hub in here just in case I want to plug things in because I, yeah, I'll probably plug in ROMs to be able to transfer over uh, and I've obviously got my Xbox controller plugged in. So let's switch that on and hope it boots from the NVMe drive. Yeah, it does. So that's booted up. So I've got some ROMs on this SD card, which is the one I generally use for RetroPie. So I'll be able to copy those over. Now normally you can just use the ordinary file manager in there. So uh, we've got a share folder here and uh, we've got, you can see ROMs and BIOS. Obviously I need to put a PlayStation BIOS in there and things like that. Um, but this is my USB stick. So you can see I've got all my ROMs in here. This is set up so that I can use it with RetroPie and, and basically boot a system of RetroPie and it will look to this USB stick to um, populated with all the ROMs and the BIOS and everything else but you can use it by just copying it over to any other systems so for instance say I wanted a Game Boy Advance ROM Crash Bandicoot we could do copy and then we just go to the Game Boy Advance folder here and paste it in now this isn't going to work and you can see paste is greyed out because some for some reason the share folder is protected it was in the version that Munker had sent me before which was the very early version of Recallbox this was Recallbox actually downloaded from the site which I'll show in a minute what I use and this was thanks to Munker he gave me this advice is Thunar uh, and so if I open up a terminal and do sudo apt install Thunar I don't need to do that because I've already installed it, but if you pressed OK, it would install within this Ubuntu or Ambien, whatever you're using with Linux. Uh, but if you want to boot it, oh, no, I need to put sudo thuna because I need to have root access. sudo thuna. So now I have a different file manager, uh, but it will allow me to do it. So if I open a new tab, can I drag this out like I can on a Mac? I can. Uh, so 
go back to the same place, Retro Prime out, ROMs, Game Boy Advance, let's do that same ROM, so copy that, and in the share folder here, go to ROMs, Game Boy Advance, and I should be able to paste that in. And you can see that I can. Now, did I have uh, PSP? Because I don't remember seeing PSP show up. PSP. Yeah, so I haven't got any PSP games on there. So let's copy over a PSP game. So copy. This will obviously take a bit longer because it's a bit bigger. And should we have a look in the BIOS folder? I think these are PlayStation 1 BIOS files. And let's go back on here. Obviously, I can't tell you where to get any of these files or, or games or anything. And go back again. And BIOS. And it looks like there isn't a PlayStation folder, so you probably just copy it into the root. Probably could have just copied all of those over because they're all very tiny. Uh, so let's close. Oh, well, let's let this finish. So on the left, I've got my 128 gig SD card, which has got various different games and things on it. And on the right hand side, uh, this is well, these two partitions are on my 64 gig SD card, which I was running Batasera from. So all the games and everything were just running from that 64 gig micro SD card. And this operating system is the custom Ubuntu operating system. I often find with the official Orange Pi versions that you can't download as many programs through the terminal as you can on this version and the Ambient version. There we go. So that's all finished. So I can shut this down. So now I can unplug the NVMe drive and it will boot from the SD card that's in there. So let's switch on again and show you how quick it starts up. So the reason I use this wired Xbox controller and you can see it's flashing because it's not paired at the moment is because it pairs to this USB dongle, uh, which it comes with. And that means that if you switch operating systems on a regular basis, there's never any need to pair. So it just works as if it was a wired USB controller and it's, you don't need it if you don't switch systems a lot, but as I switch systems a lot, it comes in really handy. So you can see it's all started up. Let's turn on my speaker. So it should remember that the audio was coming through this before and it does. So let's switch into screen capture. Okay, so let's launch PSP and just check out if Grand Theft Auto is working fine. Yeah, it's booting up fine. Bit low res looks like it's on one times obviously the psp is quite a small screen so we need to change that unfortunately we need to get rid of the music uh, it's a great soundtrack so let's go into audio and just take that music right out and if i press the xbox button i can go into settings and the only thing i really need to change is the resolution i did try vulcan just now and it doesn't work uh, i'm pretty sure vulcan isn't supported in this build uh, and Vulcan isn't always better. So let's hit continue. Yeah, that looks really nice. Nice and smooth. Let's go out and see how well this is working. Yeah, it looks lovely at three times resolution. Feels nice and smooth. Yeah, not struggling at all there. Excellent. Right, let's try original PlayStation and see how well that works. Oh, so you can see I can quit out of that. And see if the BIOS files are picked up that I imported earlier on. So PlayStation, let's just start a game. Okay, so the BIOS files aren't found by it. Uh, and there is a way of checking missing BIOS check. Good thing about this is it tells you where they should be. So they should be in the BIOS folder, uh, but we should have, yeah, all sorts look, SCPH 101 and so on. So you need to find all of those and put them in that BIOS folder that we had earlier on for it to be fully working. You might get away with just one BIOS, but uh, it's best to have all of them if you can. And I've gone back to Ubuntu because I didn't show you where to download the Batasera build from. It is the standard site, but I figured I'd show it. So just search for Batasera, download by architecture. And we can scroll down or we can do control F and start typing orange. And you can see orange Pi 5 and there is just a direct link for download. 
and it started to download already. I wonder if that version is later than my version. Let's just have a look at that from the video. So the version I had is 37 dev 83 C 50 CB 418. So yeah, I have a later version. So if you download this version and it doesn't work, then go into the update settings and do it that way and the beta version does work really well. Okay, so thanks to the Batsera team for making this great product. Uh, there's loads of documentation if you want to find out more about the system as a whole. I hope this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.